I've been researching prehistoric Southwest pottery for many decades. And the one pottery type I always come back to that you just fall in love with are the Mimbres pottery vessels, the bowls. Because they illustrate life ways and mythologies and the stories and the legends of their time. And I've had the privilege, the extreme privilege, of being in the back rooms of the museums where all this stuff is stashed away. And I've examined not dozens of these vessels, but hundreds of them. And I've recorded the images. And we have everything from Coco Paley to Spider Grandmother and the Warrior Twins. And we have hundreds of them to show you, and I can't wait to get started. It's going to be a lot of fun. So hold on to your seat. Okay, we're going to talk today about these uh, plumed serpent images. Quetzalcoatl. In Mimbre's art, he's often depicted with a lot of other animal elements. You see that plume on top of the serpent's head. That's Quetzalcoatl. That's from the Aztec. The plume serpent. You see it in Mimbre's art. You also see it in the White Mountain Redwares and other vessels, uh, Tonto's vessels uh, from the Salado culture. There he is, the plume serpent. Plumed, little plume on the head is the main part. Now this guy's got little legs and kind of a fishtail on this example, wrapped around the bowl. There's another example. Let's see, what do we have? There's another one. See the plume? And there might, may or may not be another turtle. That's rather speculative. Could be something else, could be nothing. Uh, serpent curling around, and then there's a little turtle. That is Quetzalcoatl. That's the plume serpent, the Mesoamerican god. See the similarities? That's the same, same guy. Now, this is a good image. This is uh, the warrior twins, Brother Elder, Brother Younger. And Brother Elder, in spite of all the action that's going on here, Brother Elder is cutting off Brother Younger's head with a flint knife. Uh, what I wanted to show you is this costume. He's wearing a Quetzalcoatl costume. And notice the negative space between his body and Quetzalcoatl part. That negative space is important. It always tells you every time it's a costume, almost every time it's a costume, you'll see that negative space. That's a Quetzalcoatl costume. And here's how many times that story has been painted and told. I've got three examples here today on different bowls painted by different women hundreds of years apart. So this story was a bestseller. This story was told and retold many times. But here's the Quetzalcoatl costume again. This zigzag pattern on the back is often uh, seen on fertility. It's often seen on fertility uh, staffs. Ah, mother with a sick baby. This, by the way, is a Quetzalcoatl rug or blanket. Very interesting. Okay, now here's a rattlesnake with four rattlesnake babies. And what I want you to notice, other than this grid dot pattern, which is often corn, really, on, um, you see this grid dot pattern on Quetzalcoatl very frequently. I'll show you some on some Tonto vessels. This hourglass pattern, it comes in a lot of different forms. So that's the rattlesnake pattern. Hourglass by itself is something else. But when it's in a, in a linear series like this on the back of a snake, that's the rattlesnake pattern. I can show you some other ones. I'll show you some on some Matsaki brown on buffs later in this slideshow. And of course, there's four babies. There's always four in the Mimbres uh, art, very often four. That's because the directional, uh, it's like north, south, east, west. There's also up, down, and center. But if it's depicted in this realm, in this world, it's often depicted in units of four. Very common. Some more serpents. Certainly a snake. This diamond shaped head you often see on snakes. Any more snakes here? Oh, here's some snakes. There's probably a turkey. That is a rattlesnake, as the rattle. And see the diamond back? The snake pattern, serpent pattern on the back. Again. There are some what look like swifts and snakes. Obviously, a story here. Another bird with a snake. See these images a lot. This combination quite a lot. 
I, I can't really tell. In this case, the birds are flying around carrying the snakes, but uh, is this an attack? Is the bird attacking the snake, or are they having a conversation? This could be more of a conversation. Notice that diamond back of that uh, serpent pattern on the back, the little hourglasses. Another rattles. Now these are where the rattlesnake tail has been co combined with other elements. Now these these have meaning when they're grouped together like that. Here we have a rabbit, rabbit ears, holding a flower, and he has a serpent tail, rattlesnake tail, a human form with a rattlesnake tail. And I'm not sure what this creature is meant to be, but he has this side, has the rattlesnake tail again. Notice the checkerboard. That's the starry sky or Milky Way, path where the warrior twins and other gods. Well, because we're talking about snakes and plume serpents today, I thought I'd show you some rattlesnake patterns on pottery and some plume serpents we find on pottery. These are all rattlesnake patterns. All these, this is in positive here. That's a rattlesnake pattern. A rattlesnake pattern again, all over this fine oil. This is a uh, Matsaki brown on buff, very late in prehistory. This one dates almost 1500 AD. And it has the spirit break around the rim. Right there's the spirit break. Beautiful vessel. These come in a lot of different forms. This is kind of a heel of shoulder on this one. But these are all rattlesnake patterns. You find them on the pottery quite frequently. I also want to show you some uh, plume serpents. This vessel, these tontos, this big communal tonto bowl. This is a very good example of plume serpents. This has two serpents. Let me find the start of it here. Here he is. This is his head. This is the plume, this is the mouth, there's the eye. And he goes up into the bowl and then it snakes around, he comes down again and out and around. That is definitely a plume serpent. Now there's twin plume serpents on this bowl. There again, the twins. This is Quetzalcoatl, the plume serpent, eye dot, plume. And on the other side, there's the twin without the eye dot. You see this this is not a mistake. The lady who painted this didn't forget the eye dot. This is intentional. These other symbols, this is, grid dot is usually corn, a corn symbol. We have some swirly clouds with uh, swirly wind on the inside. This is definitely a Quetzalcoatl. And you see them a lot on Tonto, but they're very stylized. And I want to show you another one. Same pattern, it's just, but it's very stylized. You would never think that that was it, but this is him again. There's the mouth, there's the plume, same thing going on. In a very similar, almost snake pattern, very similar rattlesnake pattern here. And you see this a lot on Tonto. I've got other examples. Now, if you just saw this, you'd say, well, it's just a pattern. No, but that's not a snake. But when you see them in sequence and together, collectively, then you start to recognize the common elements, especially on the bowl over here. This is just very obviously serpents. And uh, there's the serpent, and there's the plume. I want to show you one more. This one's from uh, actually East Texas. It's a Cado vessel, and this is a wonderful example. There are, of course, four of them on here. Look at that guy, holy cow, etched in. There's one on that side. There's one on that side, look at that fella. And then lower down, there are two more. Beautiful. So the symbolism, the plume serpent from the Aztec made its way well into North America. It wasn't just down in South America, it came up here too. And these vessels are um, a little later this one's about, uh, the Tontos are AD 1300 to 1400. The Cados, I will look up the date. Um, this is not my area of expertise, but I will find out the date and I'll put it in a caption 
so you know it. <laughs> and the Matsakis, these are uh, quite late. These actually, when Coronado walked by the Pueblos in 1538, 1540, this is the pottery that was actually being used at the time. The Mimbres images we saw today were painted between 1000 AD and 1280 AD. And if you want, there's a lot more of them, and we're going to have other, uh, other videos you can see. But if you want to get a copy of the book, Mimbres Mythology, there's a lot of these images we're going to be showing. Uh, just email me, and the address is in the uh, description in this video. It's just kunkel uh, at hotmail.com. That's C U N K L E. And just email me, and I'll, I'll sign a copy and make sure you get it. Thanks for watching today. Give me a like, if you like.